Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Unapologetic, the number one podcast. It's yours truly, Melly Mel, aka Mr. Unapologetic. We are here today with another young king, my brother, Norman Young, ladies and gentlemen. Please give him a hand if you can. Uh, this brother has done so much stuff, man. I can't, we were just chatting it up about the little stuff that he was doing, and I'm blown away. Uh, being a co-parenting, uh, pr pretty much program enthusiast, fatherhood enthusiast program that's going on that he does in public schools, and he's expanding from there. But we're gonna have it have, have the king himself speak upon what he does, and you know what's the overall goal for the community. What's up, brother? What's up, man? Thank How you, you doing, man? man? I appreciate you it. Up. Nah, man, glad to be um, here. Man, it's been a long time yeah, since we had to sit down. Really <laughs> and how we used to chop it up. Right. That was a long time ago. Oh, man. But uh, I love the growth, man. I love the style, man. You're more professional. You know, I I, I, I just, I see the, the, the big jump that you have done, man. It was previous, you know. And, uh, of course... All of us growing in our own special way, yeah. and I'm proud of myself as well. You yeah. know, and yeah. seeing you helps me to be like, man, I was, he really did it too. That's <laughs> what I'm talking about, man. But can you can you tell us like exactly what you do when yeah. it comes to the fatherhood program? Yeah, I'm a backtrack first, man. I want to salute you, man. Oh you man, a lot of growth, right? Yeah. Oh man, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's been a lot of growth. It's been. Did you receive it? It's been a lot. Of yeah. Growth. Right? Yeah. I, I do a podcast, so I know the work that comes behind doing a podcast. It's yeah. not easy. You know, it's not necessarily compensation. No. <laughs> Crazy, right? No, man. It but takes a lot of time, but it's, it's something that you enjoy doing and you believe in it. Of course. Yeah. And I love my people, of course. Yeah, yeah. So I salute that. I just wanted to start off with that. Oh, man. I, I appreciate it, man. That. I and, that. and then, uh, you know, so, you know the, the goal to stay on that real quick, man. <laughs> you know, your, your podcast and skills is like, Grade A to me, yeah, you know, because cool. it's you, you're you have your comfortable setting. You you pitch exactly what you want at that given yeah. time, but you don't force it in people's faces. Uh, you know, you you kind of hand it to them and you make it look good. <laughs> and there'd be some questions like that. I'd be like, "Ooh, that's a tough question. I don't know if I'm gonna answer that." But how you you know deliver the message? You know, people are easy to like, oh man, I answer this for him. I, even though that might embarrass me a little bit, I get it, you know? And so I, I congratulate on that, man. I congratulate you on that. But, oh, um, sorry, y'all, we, we backtrack it a little bit. Okay, we're getting into fatherhood program. How you get into fatherhood program? Yeah, how you get into that? So I started off working in Head Start. Mm, um, okay. I was working in preschool by accident. Even that, I signed up to substitute teach. Well, yeah. by accident. It was, well, it, it was by accident or by accident. <laughs> I had a play. Okay, all right. I respect but, but, that. But, but I, it mm -hmm. was, um, I signed up to, to teach in high, high school, and I signed up in the system, and they messed up, and they put me in Head Start on uh, accident. Wow. And I took a long-term position when I accepted the high school position, and then they translated to I took a long-term position it, in it, Head Start. So I ended up working. Yeah, that's man. a so, big yeah, job. Yeah. So it's from getting cussed out in high school to wiping noses in preschool. So you know, it's just a jump. And uh, but with that, you know, yeah. God be the glory. I was able to, after years of working in preschool, because mm -hmm. I ended up staying there. Right, right. right. And I ended up working in the classroom, and then I started servicing families more. And then when I would start working with families, they were uh, as a family advocate. So each, okay. each okay. preschool student in Head Start, they get a family advocate. So I want to help them through on their way to preschool, make sure that they can. Oh, like a guy. Like a guy, almost like your personal. Not, uh, they just assist the family and advocate. So okay. the kid, if the kids need some in the classroom, right, right, call right. your advocate. Okay. If the kids, we make sure that they get their dental, their hearing, their vision. They go to the doctors. It's like. Almost like another parent, bro. Yeah, that's what I was about to ask. Like, are you yeah. 
So I did that. I did that for so a like co parents. <laughs> so like co parents. <laughs> so I get to play with all my taxes. <laughs> if I can't oh. play with the defenders. Nah, nah. I, I hear that one. I hear that one. <laughs> but, 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 I, I did that for a while. Okay. And all then, right. um, with time, I started working with fathers more, one on one, working with fathers, working with fathers. Because I would work with the families, but my question is, where did daddy at? You know, I see your mom, but where daddy? So I right. started reaching out to dads. And then I find it out, you know, like the media portrays, right? Trying to portray statistics, say, like, yeah, yeah, there yeah. isn't a dad. That was a lie. There was a dad. He just necessarily didn't feel that preschool was for him. Like, I didn't believe either. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you think, like, her like, mom, mom should do that. Him. Mama take him. I'll, I'll, I'll pay for the school clothes and the yeah. that. <laughs> Mama take him. So I started working with the, um, dads because they wanted to be involved. They just didn't know how. Mm. So I started creating opp- okay. opportunities okay. for them to get involved. Right. Like just off the side, right? Just doing like little, pro- like the school. I was working at Edge with like, let's do a donuts for dad. Let's do a. Uh, Man, you try to get people fat donuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was doing. I love that. I was just doing like events for dads to come yeah. in, and then they were like, "Hey, Norman, we see you like doing this. How about you create a fatherhood program for us?" So I created a fatherhood program not just for Edgewood, but for all schools in Muskegon County that Head Start is covered in. So yeah, so that's it's called Dads on Jack. Oh man! So, so how many schools? Thirteen. Does this thirteen. Muskegon and Oceana County. So I go all the way to Shelby and Hart too. Ooh! Yeah, 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 yeah. God, man, that's a traveling that's every traveling. day. Oh no, 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 not every day. So what it is is I'll get a call, right? I'll just mm-hmm. get a call like a dad and say, um, from one of the schools, it'll be like, hey, we got a dad here who um, he's not getting a lot of parenting time. He's right, like right. first assistant. So I'll meet with them, show them the paperwork that you have to fill out at the courts. And then we kind of go through there. Mm. I'm no expert when it comes to law, right? Yeah, right, 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 law right, degree right, right, right. Or uh, any background in law, but I understand the simplicity. I'm going to take back that word. It's no simplicity <laughs> in the court. The law go hand in hand. <laughs> but I know the documentation that's needed the basics. To, to begin the okay. process. All right. So I help in that end. Once you wow, get in, man, that's you get to call crazy. Man. Yeah, so I help with that. I help with housing and employment. Um, and then getting dads involved. So I've done like painting with pops and Home Depot nights, Christmas nights. Wow, so you're doing like a one-stop shop in the, in, in the sense of like getting uh, parents and fathers and uh, just families yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. I, I'm a yeah. one-stop shop, but I usually got to shop somewhere else to get the help to do it. Right, So just, yeah. you might call me and because you don't may not know like, yeah. like you're, you're looking for um, housing and mm-hmm. you may not know who to call, so you'll call me, mm-hmm. and then I'll call maybe some resources that I know. That will help. That'll help. That person. So I'm middleman to resources. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, I don't have all the answers. God, that's a lot, yo. <laughs> yes, yes. That's bad. Yeah. To you, it's like, it's, it's everyday, like, not it's everyday, nah, it's nah, normal. Nah, nah, nah. That's, I, it's, right? It is a lot. No, it's, it's you know... I love what you I, I love. You sound like you're yeah. just used to it now. I ooh, am, ooh, I ooh, am, ooh. I am, man. You know, I love working with, I believe in fatherhood so much. I see. That it, it don't be seeming okay. I love you know, that. Like, if it was somebody who's playing a sport <laughs> and they were working out throughout the day, like you talk to an NFL yeah. player with time, I'm like, yeah, I do three days, but you know, I'm used to it. Yeah. You know, just because you get used to something that you're passionate about. Exactly. But, but I do want to be honest, it is tiring. You know, it does. Of course, of course, of course. It's like this. This it's like a mental, you. mental battle. It's a, it's a lot of mental. Yeah. You know, Dylan, you know our people, bro. You already know. <laughs> I love, no, but they got, you know, it's a lot of needs, it's, right? But yeah, it, but, and but, it, but rightfully it, so, though. Rightfully yes, so. Yes, that's it's what I under was resourced, right? Oh, very, under very resourced. Very line. Um, it's different living condition. Yes. So I understand. It just yeah. comes with more, right? So where I'm go, me helping a family in Hart or uh, Mona Shores. It's right. different than when I help in the family in Muskegon Height. Not saying mm-hmm. somebody, and I'm not discrediting saying there ain't no problems in Mona Shores, right? Right. It's just different needs and different levels of needs. And of course, some of the areas that I serve. It's like right. going from the United States to a third world country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, not yeah. Have the same yeah, yeah. He called, he called Muskegon Heights a third world country. I didn't <laughs> say that, though. <laughs> <laughs> I said United States to a third world. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, how. How far are you willing to take this fatherhood thing, man? Like, you're you're already doing three counties, yeah. you know. So what 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 ideas or what big 
you know, grand openings that you have in the future for the future for this? You know what? Being honest, it's, it's something I go in prayer about daily, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but. I'm not sure necessarily. I, you know, I'm, I want to take it as far as God gives me the opportunity. Right, right, right. I'm still praying that He opened up doors that I can't even imagine. Yeah, right. But course. when you see when you see all the, the shootings and the killings, True. when you see all the you know the the, the violence in, everywhere, not just here, everywhere, yeah. right? It's all over the news. You everywhere, can't you turn can't visit. You yeah. can't grow. And it's in our, in our communities, in our neighborhood. You know, like this stuff that I live with. I got caught it. You know, my nephew. I mean. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. So when you, you deal with that, right? Mm. The best way I can do my part yeah. is by helping fathers. If a lot of these young men in prison and in, in the county, they had strong fathers who were there with them, who was spending time, who was involved in their lives, bro. For real, right? Yeah, you speak it, man. So, I, I, I agree so that, that's, you talk about a vaccine. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's, that's a, a vaccine, vaccine right, right there. there. That, that's how yeah. you counteract so much that's going on. So if I can help do that, I can't put a limit of where, how much and how far I'm willing to go for it. Because exactly. my people are willing to, I'm willing to put my All the way. Out, you know that's I mean? the best answer <laughs> in the world, man. I love my people. That's love. I love my people. Oh man, man, you got me feeling good right <laughs> now, man. For what? what okay, back to you. Uh, how does this reflect? Does this? How big does this reflect to your personal life? Oh man, it's real, bro. Because it holds me accountable. Right, mm -hmm. uh, 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 keeping it a butt. We did a podcast episode about whoopings and spankings, right? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And my boy Mariel ended the podcast, and he said, "Spankings are a cap out," right? That's what he said. Now, if you look behind whoopings and stuff like that, a lot of people say that you know there were some studies that say it comes from slavery when you acted up or not acted up, but when they were trying to discipline you or whatever, right, right, for every reason, they're saying yeah, whatever. Yeah. They was already on one, but whatever. <laughs> but they they were they were beating slaves, right, and whooping them. Mm -hmm. So what slaves saying is, okay, when something going on out of pocket in my in my household or my kids are acting out of line, right. they, they never spank it. So it was spanking. Right. It came from that, just like you go to police, and right, it right. came from that. Now it's a yes. string. They're yes. different levels, course, but but that's course. where it started, right? Right. And he was talking about weapons, and I really agree with him. I felt what he was saying. I agree with Mario, like, whoopings by themselves do nothing, you know, and I, like, it's better, yes, it's better to, I see, see, yeah. it's better to sit down and talk to your kids, and still, and I ain't talking about no consequences, no, but course. be creative, right, and just yeah, try, add on, add on, be yeah. intentional, yeah. well, I say all this, I said all that to say, <laughs> this week, I whooped my daughter <laughs> with the belt, <laughs> right, right? Hey. And, and, and I almost have to do a podcast episode, because if I'm speaking something, and I'm telling someone something, I want to live that. Exactly. I can't be out here pump faking. I don't even care if you didn't know that. You may never knew that I had just with my daughter this week after yeah. that episode. But I still am want to be super transparent and real and, and real to the course that I don't want I don't want no short yeah, I, love, I don't want to fake it. nothing. If I'm struggling with something, I got a baby coming on Wednesday, right? Congratulations. I'm, thank man. you. I'm terrified. I'm terrified. <laughs> hey, I don't I don't know all that part of the programming, I'm terrified. So I don't ever want to be something that I'm not. I don't want people looking at me. Right. Like, it's a father here, God. He has the answers. He that knows is, what to do. It's not me. I'm learning. I'm yeah. learning. And I learned through meeting fathers and hearing their stories and working with other fathers. So that's mm -hmm. why I like. I've learned not only where I know a lot about fatherhood. And I have so much still to learn, and I can learn so oh, much from yeah. you. And you can, I learn from somebody who watched it. So it's about learning more so I can keep it going. Man, oh, it's as you said, man, it's a never ending. So is father. I see why you're nervous. <laughs> every, every, I feel like every new life that comes into this world, you never know what they bring. Yeah, you know, it's a whole new. It's like open a box of chocolates, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Don't yeah, know yeah. what it is. Yeah, so. And I feel, I see that, you know, what you're doing in the communities is going to reflect within your new uh, baby that's coming this yeah, Wednesday, yeah. man. He's going to, he or she is going to be magnificent, man. You're yeah, going to yeah, come. Yeah, with, yeah, you, yeah. You, what you, uh, the highlights that you just get brought upon us today 
an unapologetic man. It's it's a big, big thing. It's an issue that I feel like a lot of us as fathers and as black men are sometimes afraid to, you know, come out and say because it's such a sensitive topic. Yeah. You know, when you when you say fatherhood in a black man in yeah. a black community. Yeah. It's that's like, ugh, man, that's like that's worse than almost Pulling a gun out on somebody yes, for real. For real. Talk about hey, the parenting. You yes, can't make somebody yeah, tight. Man. Why do you think co-parenting gets so tight? You know, because if you talk, you mention something. Well, I think you should be doing this. Ooh, like that's, a, that's, a fight. That's, that's a fight. That's a fight. <laughs> that's a fight. Right. You're the person talking about somebody. That's a fight, y'all. Y'all understand what we talking about, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think you really can do this with your kids, or you're. You know, you, you really struggle in this area when it comes to parenting. You're like, what? What did you just say? Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? like, it's, just, it's very protective. You know, we are. And that's how you know that we were designed to be parents. Yeah. Because we protect it so much. Yes, man. We With our lives. Like, yeah. We put our lives on my life right? on the line. Yes. I, I die for, for you. <laughs> I die for this. It don't need no colors or no, 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 nothing no, no. to help and signify that. But that's what the love is. I want to always, you know, I think to live... It's to truly have something that you're willing yeah. to die for. Yeah. You know, you're not living if there's nothing out here that you're not willing to die exactly. for. Exactly. Yeah, man. So, okay. Take take me to the second part of your kingdom, man. As okay. I like to say, okay. of, of of giving back and putting back within the community and within yourself. Yeah. The co-parenting program. Co-parenting people. Yeah. yeah. Co-parenting is tight, bro. So, it's tight. So, what is the... Second thing that you uh, that you do to help with co with co parenting. Nah, I, I, my wife and I we do a co parenting segment called uh, uh, One Love Two Homes. One hmm. Love Two Homes. So One Love Two Homes. So you okay. know, like it's one love. We all love the children, hmm. but they go to two yeah. different homes. So because I like that. Yeah, I like that. That's catchy. Who came up with that? You see it? Yeah. You know, so, you know. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> but yeah, we did one love two homes and yeah, we grew up, man. It's you know, when we first did it, we loved the co parenting piece of it. Uh, we just did um we did a session yesterday uh with a small group of people and we were mm -hmm. like, um we need to tweak some more things, you know? Okay. Because as parenting, it's always of course, man. but but we did we, it's it's going you know, we did some filming for it. We filmed a couple couples. And then we, uh, who were recently, one was recently divorced, or they're in the process of getting a divorce, and then one who was just recently broken up. And wow, we talked about, man, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, we talked about that's crazy. what does co-parenting look like. Right. One thing that we always teach within co-parenting, so if someone's listening in and they help co-parenting, um, communication is important. Ooh, I'm um, aware. I, that's I, not I, and you know what I say? When right. you co-parenting, you got to use business like communication. You know what that means? Oh, man. I'm treating it like a job. When I call you, I'm calling during business hours first and foremost. I'm not calling the other parent at 10 at night, 11 mm -hmm. at night. I'm calling during business hours to okay. keep it healthy. I'm speaking like I'm speaking to a supervisor. So <laughs> about business. I'm not calling you out your name. I'm being respectful. Right. Um, I'm coming with the points. I ain't all that. How you doing? Uh, I miss you. Nope. This is what we're talking about. Um, on this week, our daughter needs, we're going on vacation. She should need this, this, and that. Right, right. To the point, and I keep it healthy. Whew. Communication, accountability, holding yourself accountable. You All day, you can't have a... I had to learn that. Personally, uh, yeah, I had to learn that. We all, we all grew. Yeah, it is, <laughs> you know, because you yeah. already know it's a problem. You know, when I meet with a dad and we talk about co-parenting, in the first 10 minutes, they just keep talking about what their baby mama keep doing. Right. Oh yeah, man. It can't, oh. it can't just be about that. It gotta be what can you do better too. You know, you have to look in the mirror. You do. You have you, to. Be, what I always tell my dads, you have to be the thermostat and not the thermometer. Oh, you know what I mean? the thermometer. Yeah, okay, nothing the thermostat bad. Is, no, I'm a, this is who I am. I right. hear you're turned up right now. Yeah. Right now, you being very disrespectful. But tomorrow at Wednesday, on Wednesday, I got some time five to seven. Mm -hmm. When you're in a place to calm down and you want to speak, I'm okay. I'm okay with sitting down. And it's staying that no matter how turnt you is, because they will say some stuff. <laughs> that's a discipline. That's a discipline. But as a but as that's a man, good. As, as a man, we gotta do you that. Gotta do it. Yeah, man. So, you highlight like that big time. Oh uh, yeah, man. I'm always sure. gonna put pressure on my man. I know. Yeah, I, like I know that. our black women ain't no joke. <laughs> <laughs> they strong. They, they strong. gotta be strong. Dealing with us. A lot of times we made them that way. 
by being by doing them dirty and I did some dirty too. You know, it's just a part about the hurt, uh, not being um, as the men that we claim we was beginning off. Like we've hurt women in the process, so we made them this hard. Right. They dads have done them dirty sometimes, so they they are this hard. They do, you know, have some resistance within parenting because a lot of stuff that we've done is men. Right. And that's hard to admit. But right. yeah, boundaries too. That's one of my biggest things. Setting boundaries. One thing that me and the mother of my child don't do, and I tell all my dads, do not do pick up and drop offs at the house. Mm. Meet somewhere. Have a home. designated spot. You know a better designated spot? The sheriff's office. We'll meet in the parking lot at the sheriff's office. They ain't got they ain't got nothing to do with them. You know what I mean? Like, but it's that it's that spot. Yeah, that spot. Ain't nobody trying to exactly. up in front of the sheriff. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Well, exactly, so, exactly. So. Then what you say you can move from that particular after uh, yeah. the relationship gets better to yeah, like a, a church setting. But, but or, then what uh, happens is stuff be going so smoothly. People forget. People just keep it there. They just want, you know what I mean? Or they keep it. So let's say we start off at the police station for the first year. Let's keep it there, right? Let's right, just say right, we're right. doing that. We switch another kid on and off. But what a year. Ain't been no problems with drop off and pick up because we had the police station. So people are like, you know what? Although it's a little bit further out the way, we still going to keep it at the police station even after the year because it's so, it's been working so effectively. Mm. And that's what boundaries are. Boundaries are there not to prevent everything. But to protect what's already going right in the relationship too. Right. So that's why we do you know, the mother of my child. Uh, right now, our pick up and drop off is a school. I pick up my daughter up um, on Mondays, right. yeah, Fridays, and then bring her back to school on Mondays. So it's different, but yeah, pick, that's have, awesome. Having man. boundaries and pick up yeah. and drop off, man, because. Man, we we've had some police reports. And yeah, yeah of try, course. Trying to figure it of out course. at the beginning. It's, it's always hard. Yeah. In the beginning, I feel yeah. like when you first walk into that that door, that setting, like you said, yeah. it's like a smack in the face. Yeah. 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 No. <laughs> you know, but I like the highlight of of what, one of the highlights that I took from that was I like how you are firm and at the same time courteous yeah. to the other parent. Yeah. You're like, okay, yes, we we can do it this way, and. This is how we're going to do it. But, you know, this is somewhere we can both protect each other. Absolutely. I do that you to know. protect you, too. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, it's, that's not, you know, for people. Some people only see it in one way. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. It's, it's hard to for somebody like, well, look at in my shoes. Well, you know, they've been so much about protecting themselves. Yeah. They forget about the ones that yeah. that's close to Preach. them. That family. Preach. Preach. And you highlighted that, man. Mm -hmm. you, it, it, if people don't see it, it's there in the midst. Yeah. It will come to them when it's time. I agree. So, I, I, agree. I applaud you on that. No, I appreciate it. No, and For real. I, I salute my moms, my, the mothers that we work with. You know, like, oh, yeah. it's no easy. And, and I always tell dads, you can't just go in there and demand this stuff. And you, ain't been, <laughs> you ain't been a picture 10 years. You can't just come in and yeah, say, yeah, I'm going to do this. Like, this, this, is, this is what we're going to no, stand no, on. No, like, no, yeah, no. Yeah. I always highlight a lot of the conversations. I always start off with trying to appreciate something that she's been doing. Hey man, thank you for for taking our daughter to get her hair done like for the like last it. few months. Man, I appreciate it. I've been slacking a little bit. Thank you for getting her hair done. I really appreciate that. Yeah, it's easier to communicate, or if you want to make a request when you are <laughs> kind of like something that they yeah. doing. Yeah, but you get you forget. Yeah, build it, up that relationship. Build do, up that trust. Do, and I ain't saying y'all got to be on the phone for forty five minutes giving compliments to each other, right? <laughs> but at least starting off yeah. like that. Hey, I appreciate you uh, doing uh, getting our. I seen that Kennedy. On a report card, she made it to school on time, 100% of, uh, uh, out the year. Hey, I appreciate you being oh, here. Oh man! So, what, what, what uh, pamphlets or uh, any type of like, I want to say, information that you would like tell the people that they can go to to get okay. the proper help and stuff like that. Yeah, like certain um, certain parts. Like even yourself, you know. All yeah, that. nah, nah. So, yeah. You know what? I, I'll send I'll send you the link. It's this lady that I I work with. It's a mediation service too. And mm. it's like most of it's free. Okay. And, they, and the thing is a lot of these are the mediators who work at family court too. But that's good. They're not the family court. They're not of course, but they have that insight. They have the insight. Okay. And they will sit down with you between you and the other parent if you have any dispute and they will help you guys within the conversation. Wow. One thing that's important in our um, communication piece is having someone there to hold you accountable. Um, we have a group text in our 
a co-parenting relationship. A group thing. Me, my wife, uh, mother of my child, and her significant other. Wow. Yeah. Okay. But hey, it took a while to get there too, you know. Okay. And, yeah, that's something new. I never Yeah, all right. What you think is is having that being on the same page and accountable. Yeah. And you know, like you know, like as much as like we men and we got testosterone, <laughs> well, nobody you wanna be fighting at thirty. You know what I mean? Like it's I got too much going on. I got too that's much that's going what on. that's the thought that first thought is about it. Yeah. yeah, and when you got other people reading the messages, you just more susceptible just being more kind you know what i mean right right so right. if there's someone like if, let's say that's not your dynamic let's just say it's you and the mother and y'all don't get along and y'all co-parent find someone that's mutual that y'all both respect maybe it's a pastor or mm. a parent or somebody who who level-headed though not nobody right that's, that's and crazy we care about yeah. the kid too yeah. and just say hey are you willing to just be in our message they don't even got to speak on it you know like they don't even got to speak in the group message like if it's me, the pastor, and the mother of my child, or me and the mother of my child are just talking about school clothes that year, right? At least someone is seeing it, so I'm not going to be writing something super crazy. You know what I mean? Keep yourself like, accountable. They got somebody up and accountable. Yeah, And yeah. it's stuff like that, you know what okay. I mean? So, so that's, that's a good guideline, man. Yeah, man, I know. I know. And like I said, I yeah. work with brothers, and all the time they be like, bro, that ain't going to work. My baby mama ain't that. I hear that all the time, right? You hear that all the time. But the thing is, I, I hear it all the time. <laughs> man, I hear it too. I, I hear, hear it too. It's just so funny that you said that right on cue, too, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, but the thing is, what right. happens is you be consistent on your end. It's right. turned up as she is. That's it. That's it's it. turned okay. up as she is. You keep saying, no, I hear it turned up. Yep. I, I'll talk to you. You keep Still doing like that. that you keep doing that. You keep mm -hmm. doing that. And okay. I, something will change. I ain't gonna say she gonna be sending you roses to your job and things gonna be all smooth and all that. Ah, <laughs> uh, I don't think it worked that way. No, no, yeah, no. But, but it'll be a better off. Yeah, way yeah, yeah. Was. It's hard to be turned up with somebody who always being kind of bad. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it is. And somebody you always trying to be mad and they always like be you cuss somebody up and they say thank you. Then you know something good. That's no, okay. I understand. You. I understand. I understand. Yeah. 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 You want to talk about what makes you? I might be free tomorrow. You yeah, know. Um, yeah. <laughs> and even when we free tomorrow, I don't even care what made you upset. We're just back to my daughter. So I said, nope, um, five to seven. So we'll pick up where we left off. So about drop off and daycare. How would you like that? For real. <laughs> yeah. Keep it to the point. Right. You're not going to get nothing else from me but the points. <laughs> I got it. I got so it. That's, man. Yeah. that's crazy, man. And I, I thank you, man, for, for tuning in with Unapologetic. You're part of the family, man. man. I, mean, I like I told my teacher I was going to be something one day. <laughs> <laughs> I said the same thing, but I I got I had to believe it in myself. That That's was the it. that I was like the that. catch. I like that. I had to believe it within myself. No, but uh, the the overall platform that you were creating, man, it's 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 a diamond in the rough, man. Right? I never heard of something with they go hand in hand, but they're so yeah. different at the same yeah. time. Yeah. And I appreciate the time that you gave, gave me and to the people, man. You did the favor, bro. Yeah, I, 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 vice versa. <laughs> and I'll make sure y'all keep in the loop with the links. I keep them down below. I'll make sure I get that information from the young king, Norman himself. And uh, make sure y'all like, share, subscribe. And please leave a comment. Uh, I love it when y'all, you know, it, uh, talk to me and engage into you know the conversations that we be having on the podcast. It's okay that we bring up old stuff and highlight certain things as well. I want this to be, you know, for everybody. And we keep it real, keep it fun, man. Keep it unapologetic, like the name says. And of course, please, ladies and gentlemen, I always want to take, you know, something from each interview that I have. Uh, Keep growing, keep expanding. Don't stop yourself because you are your worst enemy. Mm -hmm. And keep it, keep it live every day. You know, don't make one day bad and other days okay. Make it every day a good day. Mm -hmm. So thank y'all for tuning in on another episode of Unapologetic. It's yours truly, Melly Mel. Our special guest, Norman Young, man. And we're gonna keep it live and stay unapologetic. Mm -hmm.